So far, we've looked at decoding techniques, the various types of transformers, and how to go about really choosing a model or pre-train your own. Now, the next step in our journey is to actually look at adapting and aligning a model to our own business case. So there are a few types over here, prompt engineering, fine tuning, and align with human feedback, etc. You can classify that as different model layers. So at the foundation level, where the data quality is less because you're just bringing in all the data that you scraped from the internet, if you will, like the data that goes into an LLM training. So the goal here is to learn patterns and relationships in data, but then the business value it provides is quite low because you can't really fit that to your business needs because it's very generalized and trained on vast amount of data. Now, if you want to increase the data quality, you move on to a task layer where the goal is to perform Q&A, sentiment analysis, a bit of feature engineering, a bit of prompt engineering here, so that the business value that you derive from these prompts are quite medium because you're still working with the data set that the, an LLM was trained on, but you're tuning it so that with prompt engineering, you're able to get some business benefits out of it. Now, if you want to go with higher data quality, with the, which is preference layer, you really want to do some fine tuning with human feedback, RHF, etc., so that you get the best business value out of it. So examples could be you can train on a corpus of law data or medical data, etc., so that this model gives you outputs which is very similar to a human would have given in that specific domain. Now, there are cost implications as well. So if you look at this data cost, if you want to have a very simple machine learning scraping model like we have at the foundation layer, then the data cost is quite low because uh, it's just basic, basically scraping all the internet and gathering data and then training a model on it. I mean, there are cost for compute resources, but here we are just talking about the cost of acquiring this data. Now, as we move higher along, where we are looking at this preference layer, where we need a human feedback to generate the data, that is going to cost a lot of money. So the data cost increases exponentially here because we need humans to kind of generate the data set for us. So with that information, let's move on to now prompt engineering. So we look at some examples here in code and look at some examples of uh, what we have in this mirror board to get a broader context. And then we'll move on to fine tuning and feed human feedback evaluation, etc. So if you were to think about prompt engineering, there there are a few types and some of the obvious ones are most easiest are like context, providing instructions, giving it a task or refining and validating the data that you get out of it. So when we consider context, you want to give as much context to the LLM or the chat GPT, whatever you're using as much context as possible as to your business problem. So make your intent really clear. Uh, maybe give it uh, like a role play or tell it you, they are an expert as something. So an example here would be you can say you are an expert nutritionist and then follow on with your prompt as to what you want the chatbot to reply with. Next, another example is you are a friendly and helpful teaching assistant. So that prompt gives chat GPT or any LLM a bit more context as to how to structure the output. Next is instructions where you are just giving instructions on what to do, how to do, etc. So here an example would be, I want you to provide answers in bullet points if you want to ask your nutritional questions. Next, you can specify the actual task. Once you've given the context, some instruction, you can actually give a task to the chatbot. So here you can say text, create text or summarize something or create something. So an example here would be create a meal plan for 2000 calories a day. And another example is explain what are fractions. And then you would get output based on all of these uh, inputs that you've given to the chatbot because now you've given context, instructions, and also given it a task. So this kind of provides you a medium sort of a business value because you're creating some business value because you're a nutritionist or you're a teaching assistant and you really want to get proper replies from the chatbot. Now, if all of this is still not really useful, then we have a few options here, which is uh, zero shot, one shot, and a few shot kind of prompt engineering. So with this zero shot, you are just giving it an example of uh, how you want the output to be structured. So here, if you look at this, we can say classify this review. I love this movie. And then you provide the output space, which is sentiment, and then leave a blank. And then the completion would be 
from the chat GPT, you would get all this, but then it fills in this gap of output, which is what you're looking for as positive. So that is zero shot where you just give it an example of uh, how you want the output to be structured. Now, one shot would be just given one example and then another question that you want answered. So here we are giving one complete example over here with the sentiment as well. And then you give the next one without the sentiment asking it a question. And then the completion would be like this and then you would get a uh, sentiment over here. So this is just giving one example and then you're asking on um, following up with another question. Now there is also few shot where you can give it two examples or multiple examples. So here we have one for positive, one for negative, and then you would give your own question to give it even more context as to how to work on this task that you're asking it to do. And then it would come back with a completion. So all this again depends on the type of questions, the context and the task you're asking it to do. So sometimes one shot might work, sometimes few shot might work and sometimes even zero shot might just work. But it all depends on your business context. So in the next section, we are going to look at how to go about running this within code and we'll try to get even more deeper intuition and understanding of how all these techniques work within prompt engineering.